Hi, I'm Stu, I'm a Scorpio, and I like wrestling, but that's not what we're here to discuss. <laughs> July the 27th, 2001 was a magical day. It was the birth of a movement, not just any movement, a stone movement. And what exactly is a stone movement? Well, you're in the right place to get that answer. But for now, strap your two tones on and prepare to travel back to a magical time, July 2001. What's your, what's your name? Hi, my name is Stu. I'm a Scorpio and <laughs> I like wrestling. Are you really a Scorpio? I am. Yo, welcome to the Stu Stone Stone Movement Show at the Whiskey, July the 27th, 2001. You're about to see a videotape that is quite wild and crazy. I uh, hope you all enjoy the show, and I'm going to fall down now. Thank you. I guess the people who are watching this were probably wondering, the main question would probably be like, who are you and why are, what is this that we're watching? Well, I'm Stu. Uh, we've established that. And uh, I came to uh, California with a dream. I wasn't really sure what, where that dream would take me, but uh, at one point in my life, it definitely took me uh, down a musical path uh, where, you know, a, a sort of a hobby of doing music and rap and singing and playing instruments kind of morphed into a real sort of swing at a music career. And uh, the band was called The Stone Movement. Uh, we were a little rock, a little pop, a little hip hop, a little underground, sort of a mishmash, mash of different sort of musical tastes and genres, sort of combined in this uh, this one sort of all you can eat breakfast or part of this complete breakfast. So Josh Gray Emmer is a good friend of mine for many many years, and he's like one of the biggest hustlers I know. And he heard some of my demo recordings of these like rap songs that I was doing, and he took it upon himself to go and like book. A live show and I was obviously very happy about that but it was a nice surprise and uh, you know Josh managed to get a hold of the whiskey a go-go he didn't have any experience doing this and he managed to book us uh, a slot at the whiskey a go-go on like a Friday night basically here's the deal um, you got a 40 minute show okay. um, you're gonna take an extra five I told them that ahead of time um, you're gonna be you're loading at uh, six o'clock, loading all your stuff. Your sound checks from six thirty to seven thirty. Okay. Um, Wait, so we can do our whole show? Yeah, you'll do your whole show. Dirk, Jimmy, Jane, uh, Dirk, Jimmy, Jane, Blues Party, Skylab, Furion, and Baked Goods are the other people playing with you. Never heard any of them. When do they all go on? They go on after you. I'm the first group. You're the first group. Nice. But that's better because it means that we can get everyone there ahead of time. Everyone gets all your group that goes in there. Everyone gets to see who you are. And then you fucking bail. Thank you. There it is, man. My very first gig. Can I frame this and yeah, keep absolutely. it? Absolutely. For sure. That's yours. And they even spelled my name wrong on the contract. That's Did fabulous. That's perfect. That's great. <laughs> that's great. They spelled spell. it S-T-E-W-A-R-T. And I see they put white out on the 40 minutes, so what did it used to say? It used to be 30 minutes, and I told them that wasn't acceptable. It's cool. Josh, Josh Graham booked us a show, and there was no us yet. It was just me. And so, <laughs> technically speaking, we had booked our very first show for the band, and I didn't have a band yet. And so I had a few weeks to sort of throw this together, and I had no band. So I guess rule number one when you're trying to start a band uh, is to have a band and through uh through some contacts some former child actor buddies of mine uh haley haley johnson her husband johnny lang i was able to meet uh, a band called soul puppet this is the band everybody take a look everyone introduce yourselves one by luke one. what do you play the luke? drums drums yeah. and chris guitar player <laughs> maestro jay bass i'm stefan the violin player I'm still the player. <laughs> I just play. Soul Puppet were a really talented group of guys. Uh, I was a fan of their music already. And so uh, approaching them about coming and playing my style of music and uh, helping uh, bring it to life, I thought would be a lot more challenging of a prospect. But it wasn't. Chris, uh, Luke, and Stefan uh, agreed to do it. And uh, our first rehearsal was going to take place at Chris's house because his parents uh, were going out of town. <laughs>
uh, there was these guys I, that came to check us out rehearsing who were working with the band, I want to say Dream. He wanted to come and check us out and he came to watch us rehearse and he was just like blown away by it. I thought we were getting a record deal like on the spot. I was like, this is so easy. Like, we just have our first rehearsal, have invite someone, and we're, we'll get a record deal. Unfortunately, that didn't work out. Like, uh, I don't think we ever heard from the guy again. This is making the band, the band, <laughs> but like, like the real one. The rehearsal at uh, Chris's parents' house, that went well, but obviously uh, I believe that would be our final rehearsal at the house after his parents came home and sort of figured out what we had done. So we had to um, find another place to rehearse, and we did. There was a really fantastic place that I absolutely love and I recommend called Amp Rehearsal in North Hollywood, California. And uh, that was the beginning of forging a very long relationship with that place. Uh, it became sort of our new home base. We had rehearsals there twice, three times a week. We were, we were cramming to be a band. And the only way you can sort of cram is to put in, uh, put in the rehearsal time. And that we did. Yeah, what's up, man? So what's going on here, Steve? Just rehearsing, testing this new bass player who could who will be joining us on the world tour this September, coming to a town near you. Tim Dog in the house.
July 27th, 2001 came so fast, and all of a sudden, here we are, getting ready to play the world famous Whiskey A Go Go. The marquee said, Stuart Stone, S T E W A R T, Stuart Stone, which isn't, you know, that's not how you spell my name. So we were off to, we were off to that start, which is fine. But <laughs> I guess we should have known because my name was spelt wrong on the contract that that's probably the name that they went with. But for whatever reason, uh, Josh got it fixed. They fixed it. And uh, that would be the last time that we would ever, that would be our first show performing together, but also our last time ever performing as Stu Stone. Because after that day, we made sure that it said the Stone Movement. Well, 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 well. isn't the OMG crew. Yeah. Hey, hey camera guy. Cable guy, Jeff. Okay. Getting ready to do my hair for the show so that all the uh, people in the audience will see that I have so much hair. Don't you wish that you could just do this with your hair, Jeff? Oh, yes. Look, I'm just gonna use everything in here. May as well go all out. I mean, it's all or nothing, you know what I mean? True. There it is, the rest of it. And we're, we're in Wes's bathroom, that's Wes right there. Hey, Wes, say hello. I'd like to thank this guy, Josh. He's the guy that books the show. He's the guy that put this whole thing together. Without him, none of this would be possible. Thanks, Josh. Rock and roll will never die. Right back there, there should be a stick bag. Oh, shit. Get it? That's for you, homie. A stick bag. You should put Luke's yeah. stick bag. Put that on during the white game. It's, it's a little black, little bag. Very thin. Stick. I love it. That's, that's the white game. We get a long bit right there. I didn't want to bring you a leg, so I brought you that little present. Okay, you guys the backup singers? Yeah, yeah. I don't know what I'm doing because I'm you excited for tonight. I'm backing up for some other backup singer. Yeah, yeah. We're, uh, We're excited. Do you guys know your parts? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot. We're done. I'm gonna go get my tux. How was sound check? It was really, it was really good. It was fun. I spilled ketchup all in my bag, and all my shit is like covered in ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I could sneak a sandwich in here. And... <laughs> Here's the look. The look that's sweeping the nation. Stu Stone leather jacket dork look. <laughs> Everybody, come on! Yeah, 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 get up, 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 get
Listen, I walk the river on the river on the lake with pickets. Back in '83, I was six playing pick up sticks on the floor with my sisters to pick up chicks and get pissed. I was six. Still was a bit of a rough but the first time. Since you got my ticket, it felt like shit. Now you ask, where's this going? Going? What's it gonna be? Get on the dance floor. Always winning, never losing. Young lords got this beat. I'm abusing, you got the track, I got the bag, you got the gig, I got the cat. Two stone up, just doing my thing, just like Wu Tang, like the clan. Two stone, two cat, like Sam. Our most popular song was called One Crazy Bitch. And it was a song that was sort of based on a true story of like me breaking up with an ex girlfriend who had like left me uh, some pretty nasty voicemails. And we turned, uh, into, turned it into a song with Young Lord, uh, the producer, and uh, Tommy McCarthy, who was a good friend of mine, who was, this, who was singing on the hook on that track. Tommy was in a group called No Authority, which was uh, like a pop, um, a boy band act. And they were sort of coming to the end of their run, and I invited Tommy just to join our band. And he was all for it. And we sort of had this Linkin Park thing sort of happening like before Linkin Park was happening where Tommy would sing stuff and I would do rapping and uh, it was really cool. We had like some dance numbers that we did together and we were really, really tight. Uh, and he had experience in the music business that I didn't. And I had a lot of sort of a performance experience and doing sort of comedy and stage work that he didn't. So we really complimented each other well. And uh, it was, uh, it, was, it was exciting to have Tommy on board. The Stone Movement is expanding every day, expanding faster than Starbucks. And we've got a new member to announce tonight. Is Tommy McCarthy in the house anywhere? Where's Tommy at? Here he is. Grab a mic, man. She was like a dream come true. A fantasy from my head. Then I found out that she was one crazy I bitch. Thought that she would be the one. I heard the ball go round and sun. Then I found out that she was one crazy. It was like a dream come true on that stage. Uh, it was like, you know, everything you picture it would be. Like it felt to me like we were performing at Woodstock. You know, it was like the crowd was into it. Uh, we had some really cool moments. As a matter of fact, Jamie Kennedy, who I would later go on to team with to do uh, music, he was a part of the very first show. We had this bit during the show where we'd have this contest where like some lucky person in the audience would get to come up on stage and sing with us. And the winner of the contest was Jamie Kennedy. Um, so Jamie was a fan of the Stone Movement stuff and he was happy to get on stage. Little did we know, me and Jamie would end up doing music together and having some success actually. But uh, this was a pretty funny moment when Jamie came on stage. Uh, sort of the beginning of, uh, of that journey indirectly started right there. Here he is, the winner of the meet and greet contest. Jamie, and hello Jamie. Congratulations. Hey, good to see you. Yeah, yeah, that's... That's right. Holy, holy shit. <laughs> OMG, it's Jamie Kennedy. <laughs> OMG, OMG. Oh, OMG. OMG, it's through the Jew. Will you, will you sign something? Will you sign my breast? Uh, I'll, I'll do that for you. Wow. <laughs> I like to grant a request. I, li I like your stuff. I like. Still. Are you. What? Lick it. Lick it. Boy, that. He's Jewish, he can't. It's... He's Jewish. You want me to sign your chest? What do you want? Look at your nipple. OMG. All right, you stay right there and you just revel in that. Kendra was uh, an interesting force behind the scenes of the Stone Movement. Uh, she was definitely really smart uh, from a marketing standpoint. Like she knew how to get us attention. Uh, she went on the Howard Stern show and she mentioned the band and our website crashed. And you know, she was a, she was a big supporter of the group. Is there a Kendra Jade in the house? Is there a Kendra Jade in the house? 
Welcome. Congratulations on winning the auction. Why, thank you. Uh, this is this is our other winner, Jamie. <laughs> that's Kendra J. Yeah, that's her. <laughs> OMG. <laughs> you guys want to uh, you guys want to join us on stage for this next number? <laughs> Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end. And this is gonna be the last song of the night. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. This one's called, The Party's Over. Just want you to make you dance a little bit, a little wiggle, maybe a little two-step. Yeah. Yeah. Let's say you're having a party with a few friends Some people show up, we'll call them new friends You invite them in without thinking Before you know it, the dance is on the couch drinking Everything's cool, have a good time, make a new pal Wanna get out of line, they start punching your stuff Breaking your stuff, not stealing your stuff, they're just taking your stuff Now they talking shit, thinking they're rough Look around the room, about to get done Stand up for yourself, show no fear You ain't gotta go home, but get the fuck out of So long, turn the lights out The party's over Everybody give it up for Stone! Tommy! Tommy! Thank you, good night everybody! Thank you to Josh! Where's Josh? Thanks for putting this together, Josh! Ha! So long! Turn the lights down! The party's over! Oh, wow, oh, wow, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> we had great chemistry though. Nobody even knew. Nobody knew. Nobody knew. Huh? I felt real good up there, man. I got the dollar in my pocket and I fifty in my hand. This is night one. Night one. Day one. Show one. Night one. Easy. Easy. Number one. Number one. The stone moon's gonna have to move out of their apartment. Hey, I'm damn straight. <laughs> Moving on up. <laughs> We are coming, America. We are coming. We are invading Faster your airwaves. Faster than we're going to brainwash your children into buying our stuff. <laughs> Not stealing our stuff. You're taking our stuff. I'm just kidding, kids. I love all of you, fans. I don't have any yet, but <laughs> hopefully, I got one right here. TC. What's up, TC? Thanks, Fred. I remember Stu Stone, he was just a little boy from New York. He looked yeah. Yeah. like this. Yes. Remember I was like down in the yeah. press after the show? I was like... Yeah, I called you, you're like... Hi, I'm here, I'm just... Running. Now I'm like... Whee! <laughs> Bring on the blues! 
Yeah, it was fucking awesome. Can I please tell you how unbelievable you are? It was so good, and I want to buy it. Wait, wait, wait. So good. It was so much fun. Okay, Wednesday. Another one. Oh, please. I will. It was so fucking cool. I love how you mixed it up. Sort of. I love the funniest message on Stefan's answering machine, saying that you guys are the greatest ever. It's, it's on, man. Josh immediately lets us know that he has us booked on like five more shows immediately. Like we are going for it now. And show number two was at a club that was run by a good friend of mine named Danny Gez. He was having a night where he had Wyclef performing live at, at the bar. And he invited us to come and, and, and play on the bill. So our, <laughs> our first show was at Whiskey A Go Go. Our second show was playing with Wyclef. <laughs> She was like a dream come true Fantasy from my head Then I found out that she was one Crazy bitch Thought that she would be the one But the ball go around the sun Then I found out that she was What? What? She was like a dream come true Good night, everybody. Thank you to Jack, Wyclef, Jimmy Cozier, Danny Gez. Good night, everybody. So we get to the Opium Den, and uh, I guess there's some sort of misunderstanding because the club wasn't open. All right, you guys, we're moving the party to Dragonfly. We're going to try and make this work. I just called the promoter again. I'm like, are you serious? Like the guy that does the whole bookings and all. I'm like, are you serious? Like we cannot do this? And he goes, I thought you knew. And I'm like, how did you think I knew when like just yesterday you got an email on my newsletter talking about the show? So they just called me like a half hour ago and said we're not opening. So I spoke to the promoter over at the Dragonfly and she's gonna be cool enough to let us try to put this like all together over there after her bands are done. As seen on the California yeah. Music So Awards. they're the band from San Jose that drove down here. Cool. Cool We're all in the same boat. Well, we saw... <laughs> their friend did. Well, actually, yeah, it was them two and two of their friends, and we saw them at Bob's Big Boy in Burbank. Me and Jay were hanging out with a couple of our friends. Yeah? And they recognized you? And they recognized us. <laughs> and they took a picture of me and Jay. <laughs> with, her, with her in the middle. Super stuff. Like, so just have fun, everybody sit and jam and watch each other, and we'll have a good time. I mean, if you had people showing, you know what I mean? No, we have a lot of people. Yeah, then you don't want to fuck that. I agree. <laughs> yeah, you need to get a hold of it, yeah. I agree. Hey, we're shooting a little documentary. You want to say what's up? Cool. Bob Show! Brickhead, yeah, hanging out in front of the old club. We're not playing, we're now moving, yes. You guys, all the other bands? <laughs> yeah, all the nice. bands are here right now. We're all here. We could do like a Rage Against the Machine street band. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did anybody get a generator? That. They're going to use our drum set and our bass rig and our guitar rig, so therefore. Um, that would, yeah, that would, be that would cut down change. like terrible. That would be cool. Literally, yeah. you could get off stage and you could get off stage. Yeah, much easier. That works quick and I'll use the same gear as yeah. far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Doesn't matter to me. Okay. You okay with that? Yeah. To Leah's credit, she did solve the problem, and we ended up going and playing at another club that night. We just brought our gear over to this other club called the Dragonfly, and we ended up having a pretty cool show. So, props to Leah for, you know, figuring out how to fix the problem. <laughs> Alright. Tommy, everybody. Tommy. Hey, Phil. Good, good catch. Phil. Good catch. We're here in Columbia, South Carolina. I'm <laughs> Mr. Knows It. And, uh... Just keep watching Hang Town, that's for sure. <laughs> at this point, we are punching our time card at every club up and down the Sunset Strip. We're hitting the Roxy now. And the Roxy's like, is there a better venue than the Roxy? I don't know. Uh, playing the Roxy, that was, that was a real wake up call of a show because it was packed. And people were like already sort of started knowing the songs even. And uh, I feel like we really, it started to feel really real at that Roxy show. Hello. 
Hello. Let's do Stone here at the Roxy. A couple hours before showtime. They uh, spelt our name right on the marquee this time, which is a good thing. Sitting here with Tim Dog, who's actually standing here. Luke, hey. joining us. What? What do you guys say, Luke? Finally playing the Roxy. It's about time. time. It's going to be very exciting. Very much looking forward to uh, hitting that stage. There you can see our view of the crowd. There's a lot of people out there, Tony. There are a lot of people. I'm not nervous. I'm going to carry this. My voice is almost gone, but I'm not nervous. Yo, okay, we're ready. Showtime. All right. Okay. Let's do it. This is a documentary? Yeah, I'm gonna film myself walking out on stage, you know what I'm saying? We're getting ready to introduce California's hottest band, Stu Stone. In the Stone Movement, Dave Levy, thank you very, very much. Y'all have a good time. I work at the Roxy. I see many bands, but this band, off the hook. Get ready here first. All right, we're ready to go. Making the walk. Actually, Tommy, let's wait for Stefan to do his thing. <laughs> Where's Stefan? Yeah, it's Stefan to do his thing. Good luck, y'all. I know you can do it. You kicked out the whiskey. You can kick it here. This is my friend Jeff. They just introduced us quite nicely. Oh, let's go. Just wait for Stefan to do his thing. Wait for the beat to start. I gotta grab the mic. Get the mic set. Yeah, you're gonna hand me my mic. Okay, so you go first. If you go up a little prematurely. <laughs> Gotta tell you, I'm a little excited for this. <laughs> Where do I go up? Do I go right there? Yeah. Go ahead, Tommy, go now. Tim's parents were at one of the shows and heard sort of the lyrics of the song and uh, he was like a younger guy and I guess they didn't approve of the lyrics and Tim's parents pulled the plug on Tim. So we lost Tim as our bass player and that is how we ended up with Greg Bahamas. Greg Bahamas is one of the most talented musicians that I had ever encountered and one of the most unique individuals I had ever encountered. And if the, anybody has any if someone knows Greg Bahamas, tell him to hit me up. <laughs> I haven't spoken to him in years. Uh, he, last time I saw him, he had rode a bike to my house from Burbank, California to Toronto, Canada on his bicycle. He drove a bicycle to my house in Toronto. We had a visit for a few days. He got on a bicycle and drove back to the United States and sort of rode off into the sunset. So I have no idea what happened to Greg Bahamas, but I, I love him. He's a hell of a musician and a bass player that was like way ahead of his years talent wise. Um, but he really, when Greg joined the group, we were really, it really sort of started coming together. Hey man, welcome. Your bass player, Greg. It's uh, pretty good so far. She's a little camera shot. 
two, three. We were checking off bucket list venues off of our list pretty quickly into our journey as a band and uh, we were blessed enough to be able to perform at the El Rey Theater. There was a big annual Halloween event that was taking place and my buddy Rich was throwing the event and he had seen us play at other places and he wanted us to play the El Rey Theater's like Halloween event. I mean, think about the rock bands that are playing at these places, the Whiskey and the Roxy and the Opium Den and now the El Rey. Uh, so legendary, in fact, that it turned out to be one of the most legendary encounters of our lives. Uh, I remember setting up our gear on stage and Tommy turns to me and he says, hey, look over there. And I'm like, what? He's like, that looks like Mick Jagger. I'm like, what? I look over, I'm like, that is Mick Jagger. <laughs> the Rolling Stones were looking to do a club show in Los Angeles. They ended up doing it at the Wiltern, but they were scouting clubs to do a Rolling Stones show. And the El Rey was giving the Rolling Stones, Mick Jagger specifically, a tour of their theater while we were sound checking. And so Mick Jagger's there. <laughs> we're playing like one crazy bitch or whatever we're doing. And, uh, you know, we're in like Halloween attire and uh he was sort of like <laughs> i'm not gonna say he liked it like but for the sake of this story he loved it <laughs> uh but, you know I, I swear i saw his foot like you know he had a little they were a little toe tap uh but uh you know tommy uh, convinced me to go over and uh introduce ourselves so we went over there and we ended up getting a picture with Mick Jagger, and uh, there it is that's us with Mick Jagger, and uh <laughs> If anything, I owe Rich not just for that show at the El Rey, but the opportunity to rub elbows with uh, with the great Mick Jagger. That was that was a day I'll never forget. Because it's gonna be in my biggest crowd yet. Do you see it, Jeff? As we're coming in. Yeah. Go ahead, Steph. Okay, Lord bless the show. Thanks for bringing us here. Uh, just let it be safe. Let everything go well and smoothly. Um, I just bless the show. Just stay here. Soul Puppet guys and I guess they 
they had an idea that we ran with, which was let's feature Johnny Lang, one of the best guitar players in the world, in the worst possible way we can and have him just play terribly on purpose. <laughs> At first, I think Johnny, well, he has a great sense of humor. So I guess, you know, he was into it. He thought it was hysterical. So Johnny comes in and, and here we are recording this song. We've got one of the best guitar players of all time and we're asking him to play as poorly as he possibly can, uh, which turned out to be a challenge for Johnny, but because <laughs> he's so good. Um, but we had a good laugh. Is he coming over? Yeah, he said I'll try. Okay. I'll do it funny. The ceiling is going to collapse. Yeah, downstairs. <laughs> Uh, that needs to be cut. Uh, <laughs> Go on. That was, that awesome. was funny, but I mean, <laughs> that was awesome. Let's hear it. Play it. That's like as good as you can get, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's really funny. That's, that's as good man as you can get right there. Yeah. Oh, man, it, Cause it sounds enough like this song. What is the name of this song? It's called... I don't know. Catastrophe? <laughs> catastrophe. <laughs> catastrophe. <laughs> that's the name of the song. The song is Catastrophe. Hey! Hey! <laughs> That's it right there. Hey! Hey, hey! 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 The real reason to have this is to just get together. It's the holiday time. And just have a good time. I don't know what time is that, but let's just start it. I love food and come with it. I'm out with it. Who did it? It's too strong to see me. Always put it, never lose it. Cause I'm a guy to see. I don't use it. I'm a guy to see. I'm a guy to see. It felt like things were really happening. We had a website, Cable Guy Jeff, like built like one of the very first sort of like really ahead of its time. Uh, Websites, we had a message board, we had people showing up to shows, things were starting to happen. And uh, Young Lord, who was the producer who had worked with me on the first batch of songs for the Stone Movement stuff, were you know, he was very instrumental because they were all his instrumentals, <laughs> it was his, his tracks that were the music behind the very first batch of songs. So he started to want to maybe get more involved now. He saw maybe there was something going on here, so he flew out to California. We get into the studio. Uh, with Chris Rosa, Bob Horn, uh, Dale, and Young Lord, and uh, we uh, start working on some new material. And it was starting to, it was really, it was starting to come together. Like, the songs were getting better. Thanks. Yo, what's going on, Luke? We, we're at the studio. We're just doing one crazy bitch, redoing it. Tommy did his vocals. I did. It was like something from a fantasy. Got a girl so close with a man like me, there had to be. Just one little bitch shit, and I found out the girl was a bitch. Oh. Messages. <laughs> Next message. 
Definitely sounds a lot better. I like that. You like that? Yeah, let's uh, bounce that shit. Life's too short for you to take it personal. You got to take it as it comes. You gotta let that push go. Live your life as if you ain't got no tomorrow. You got to take the highs and lows. You got to let that push go. You say you're immature, well then grow up What's up? You say you're sick a lot, well then grow up You gotta be your last, at least you showed up Your girl says you're moving fast, well then slow up I want to see something Are you sure this is your can? It might not work, it may Are you trying to make me look stupid on purpose? Can you throw it over? Yeah, I'm trying to make you look stupid Can you throw it over his right shoulder? Try that Like a bear spin, like a rug But you just got him Hollywood Knights was a charitable basketball team that like would travel uh, throughout Los Angeles and uh, Southern California where it was a basketball team made up of celebrities taking on school faculty at various schools. Tommy was on the basketball team and Tommy was able to convince the Hollywood Knights to let the Stone Movement perform the halftime shows. You know, the Hollywood Knights team consisted of uh, Tommy, uh, The Miz was on the team, uh, Alfonso, uh, you know, Fresh Prince was on the team. Basically every heartthrob you could imagine was on this team. And somehow they let my ugly ass on the bus so that uh, we could do the halftime show. Yeah. I look lame as Coach told me that uh, I don't have to worry about having to get into the game. I told him I was a Jew and can't play ball. Now we're just chilling. Number 14, who recently signed a solo girl in a strong recording of the new album to play the release for the summer. He has toured with Christina Aguilera, 90 Degrees, and Britney Spears as a member of the former recording group No Authority. Tell me if you If you guys want to get a little circle going, you can if you want to come up on the floor. The Stone Movement! Yo, what's up, everybody?
Hey, what's cracking? Stu Stone here, Stone Movement. We are just chilling like a villain, top villain, over here at the uh, Power 106 bus. There's the cable guy, Jeff. That's the guy that let us have his batteries so that we could preview the track tonight. That was him right there. Justin. Say what's up, man. Hey, what's up, big dog? How y'all doing? I'm big dog. <laughs> you guys do right there. You guys see yourselves in here? Yes, you can. No, Say what's up to Canada right now. What's up, Canada? Canada, Canada right now. Canadians, what's up? This is for my uh this this how you doing? This is for my grandmother. This tape is I'm sending this to my grandmother. You can call her Booby. Booby. That's what I call her. I'm Jewish. I have like a Jewish not Booby. 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 My grandmother's Booby. Like hey Booby. Hey Booby. Say hey Booby. And, and talk to her and tell her what's up. Hey, hey Booby, what's up? Oh, she was like the Pick the wrong spot to sit because the kid that's like the most popular guy is right there. Sit in here. Sit in here. Try my best to be a man. Your God, baby girl, but I can't get around. Go, 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 go. He started this thing oh, yeah. off. There you go, 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 So we had wrapped up production on what would be the very first album. You know, we're a band now for a year at this point. We have enough songs to put out an album. So we decided to do a focus group. <laughs> That's how we were thinking, you know? Let's focus group this. Let's get reaction. So we invited a bunch of uh, friends, supporters, family members to come on down and, uh, and we would perform the album for the first time. And uh, I thought it went really well. Ironically, the album never came out. <laughs> so that focus group was probably the only group ever to hear every song that we had at that time. Like they were never performed again like that. They've never coming out. You got those forms. I would like you very much if you could fill out after each song that you hear a little comment on each song. Whether it's like this song sucks but this song is the best ever. Oh my God. Either way is good. All right, we're gonna just start. This is one of the new songs right here. It's called Stone Movement. I want you guys to enjoy this round. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's that bringing it, singing it? I play, play it here. Lock your girl up, I'll stick my thing in it. It's Stu Stone in the Stone Movement. The compact disc king is stereo, got you moving. Coming out of the field, came to play ball. Just a little Jewish boy with glasses. I got tall. Not a breast man, dog. I prefer the asses. Take your lunch money, milk money, all passes. Stu Stone, rocking the two tones. You need to get a hold of me, hell, I got two bones. I'm so in trouble, I'm breaking down barriers. I got that in every just bring my shit to the record shop. I'll be in every up, cause I'm not hysteria. Oh, baby. I didn't mean to say it. Life's too short for you to take it personal. You gotta take it as it's okay. Gotta let that bullshit go. Live your life as if you ain't got no tomorrow. You gotta take the highs and lows. You gotta let that bullshit go. Come on, baby, do it here, though. Come here soon. Woo! And good night. Today 
is Tommy McCarthy's birthday. Yeah. Yeah. We have a special treat for Tommy. Hey. We're gonna sing him happy birthday. Allie is gonna start with Sarah. So Joey Nix was actually the DJ at the Hollywood Nights games. Power 106 sent him there to like sort of promote the radio station. He would be playing tracks. I would start sort of freestyling on the mic and we hit it off right away. Um, and Joey ended up joining the group. So now we had a DJ. That was a really cool element to add to it. And uh, I felt like our lineup was, you know, we were, get, we were now, we were cooking with gasoline. Just walking down the street. Just a bunch of regular guys. See, this is a music video where it happened. Yep, cause it's a bittersweet symphony. That's <laughs> na 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 na. Where's Steph? There he is. Hey guys, what's cracking? Uh, we're just kicking it, just chilling. That's really cool. That looks. Josh, you're gonna walk backwards across this light. You're just gonna have to trust us that no one's gonna hit you. You're gonna cross this street. Yeah. No, stop. <laughs> All right. Michael and Larry, I just met you guys where? Outside this uh, liquor store here? Okay. I have my rehearsal 
that I just walked all the way over here to get the drink of Snapple. Uh-huh. It's, it's down there past that light, but I don't want to walk all that way. Yeah. So I was going to say that if you guys want to make five bucks, I got five bucks right here. Uh-huh. You guys can give me a ride to the rehearsal. Sure. On your bike. Okay, I'll, say I'll hold okay. the five dollars. All right, you get the five dollars at the end of the trip. All right. Okay. okay. Whoa, you okay? We're good? Is this distracting you? No. Nah. Stop. If I want to distract him, I can knock him off his right, bike. Just so be safe, please. just be safe. You want to see me knock him off his bike? Why? No, that's not even cool. Do not even make jokes about knocking anybody off any bike. I'm just kidding. You can hear a sound through that camera? Yeah, you can hear sound. I think I farted. That's terrible. <laughs> Larry farts all the time. <laughs> no. Hey, I think I like the smell. What's up, gang? What's up, oh, we got a running race here, and no. And no, we win. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Just keep going a little bit past them. Past what? These guys. These ugly guys? Yeah, these, uh, these ugly guys. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> so, guys. <laughs> I don't even know him. He said it's 25. Probably took your wallet, kid. Watch out. I might as well get your camera so you document this. I already am. Oh, you got it? Here. Can you, can you take oh, it's on record. Yeah. yeah. Hey, what's up, everybody? Okay. Hey, kids. These guys right here. You guys are. Your kids say Androids yeah, is hey, the illest. Android the division. That doesn't make any goddamn sense. Hey. Say Androids is the illest. Here is Ham more. Hey, the record. Androids is the illest. <laughs> You're a funny kid. You're a funny kid. If you were yeah, 20 okay, years older, right. I would have probably. These guys, for the record, have to split <laughs> this five bucks. So why don't I do this? I rip it in half, give you half, give so you half. Android, you guys decide on something you, you want to buy, take it back together, buy something. No, man, it's all right. We're that good, good of friends. All right, thank you. <laughs> I'm this kid right here jacked this kid for five bucks. That's Thanks a classic that, move. Yeah. Peace to the God. Josh was friends with a group called the Hippos. He had them play like at some of like some fraternity parties back in the day, like at USC or whatever. But Josh knew the Hippos. And the Hippos was like a, like a party band that was really popular in Southern California. And I had seen them live at a bunch of parties and I was a fan. And Josh had told me that the Hippos were taking a little bit of a breather and that uh, Danny Ruckison, who was the trombone player, but also like kind of like the de facto manager of the band at that point, uh, you know, he was available to like do stuff. So I hit up Danny and uh, Danny came to the studio and we did this track called Three O'Clock High with the Baker Boys. Shout out to Nick, Nick V of the Baker Boys who gave, he was another guy that gave me tracks very early and this is like the biggest DJ on the radio. Danny comes to the studio and with Nick V from the Baker Boys, we do this track called Three O'Clock High, which is like a storytelling song where I got Abnormal, another rapper uh, who's amazing, and Dirty Rat, who is like a legendary Valley rapper, uh, awesome guy. And we did this song with Danny, and he played the trombone on it. And then, you know what happens from there? I got to get him to join the band. Let's do it. Oh, Raise! <laughs> 
Allison Porter is um, literally the best singer ever uh, that I've ever met. And, uh, you know, that was all confirmed when she won The Voice. So obviously someone else agreed with me. America agrees with me. But uh, Allison sang the hook on our signature song. So One Crazy Bitch was like our popular song, but our signature song was called Just Stone Movement. And it was sort of an introduction to the band, like who's, who is Stone Movement? We're a little rock, a little pop, a little hip hop, a little underground. Allison singing the hook. So it made sense for Allison to come and sing with the band. Josh booked us a show at the Hard Rock Cafe in Beverly Hills, which was one of my favorite venues to play because um, not only did you have, get to have a good show, but they gave you food. So <laughs> you could go there, you could like eat, and then you know everybody sort of feels like they're getting paid that night. We had a pretty good show uh, put together for that Hard Rock show, but the promotion was insane. Josh rented a limousine and drove down Sunset Boulevard. I don't even know if there's footage of this, but he rented a limousine and put like, 10 sexy dancers, guys and girls. He had got in the hustler shop to donate free sex toys, drove up and down the Sunset Strip during like a busy club night and stopped in front of all the clubs. My song would play, the limousine door would come out, the girls would come out and do like this flash mob dance and give out sex toys to people in line and handing out flyers. And it created this whole melee, um, sort of viral marketing before there was like internet to do that with. And it worked. You know, it was a packed house at the Hard Rock. Uh, and <laughs> I forget how he got the sex toys, but I, I don't I don't ask. Yo, wanna introduce us? What's up? the Stone Movement. Yeah. 
Soul Puppet actually informed me that they were going to have to part ways with the group. Um, you know, they had their own band. They had their own dreams, and I don't blame them. Uh, you know, we had been going hard for, like, you know, a bunch of shows. It's going really well, but at the end of the day, they're still, like, playing, you know, my rap songs and not, you know, their songs. So I don't blame them, but uh, Luke and Chris decided it's best if they sort of went back and focused on their band and uh, they didn't leave me uh, hanging at all. You know, you can't have a movement in, by yourself. You need to have people that believe in it and support it. And throughout the years, I've been blessed enough to meet people that did believe in it at one time or another. And uh, we were able to have a, a few different lineups of the band. So tell me a little bit about yourself and about how you got started in music and what you're hoping to like have fun and stuff moving forward. Well, uh, I started playing guitar when I was in like nine years old, because my brothers had a band, and uh, I wanted to do a lot like my brothers, and they're ten years older than me. And uh, they'd always play in my brother's room, and I'd go in my parents' room, which was right next to it, and always listen and get my little guitar and play along with them. And I've just been playing since then, and uh, I just I went to school with Greg, and Greg started playing because of me. And uh, <laughs> he did though, right? Since you told me the Stone Movement, I'm really excited to be part of. Like when Greg told me I was be part of it, like screamed and jumped up and down. Uh, I'm Eric, and uh, I started drumming when I was like six months old because my dad did it, and uh, I love hip hop, everything. So you know, like I'm looking forward to having a lot of fun with it. You know, it should be a lot of fun. Have you guys heard the full CD? Yeah. What do you think? You like it? Think I, you, yeah, think I think you guys it. can get into that? Yeah. yeah we totally. used to drive around going to parties and listening <laughs> to it. Yeah, it's our sort of like party going. Nice. Okay. Nice. <laughs> Under these shirts, it's gonna say ten dollars only. <laughs> makeup, please. Makeup, makeup. <laughs> Stu Stone, Riley Stone, just chilling. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Kind of looks like me, huh? Look at this feast that Josh has prepared for the Skull Movement. Wow. 
<laughs> and we're eating this. <laughs> Josh, let's give it up for Josh, everybody. Woo! Watch out, man. I'm carrying a fruit bowl. You're going to spill fruit bowl. You're going to spill fruit bowl. Come on, dude. Get out of his head. Come on, dude. Let me taste some of the fruit No, get a fruit bowl. Stop it. Hey, careful. Enough. Enough. Enough is enough. You're going to spill the fruit bowl. Stop it, man. I'm trying to get out of the fruit bowl. I just want to taste the fruit bowl. Give me a taste. Come on, taste a little taste. I want a whole fruit bowl. Yeah, that's a good fruit bowl. Uh, Josh, at this point, decides, hey, we need to get more momentum here. We need to get some sponsorship. I mean, here we are. We're a band with no record deal, with no songs out. All we have is maybe 10 shows under our belt, but they're doing well. Like, the people are showing up at these shows. So Josh manages to convince a clothing company to sponsor us so that we could do a photo shoot so that Josh could make flyers with these professional photos and we could start flyering because we weren't really flyering at that point. Like standing around. Yeah, that was Seriously. Cool. I agree. Like we should have someone like on the ground and looking for something. Are you actually filming? Yeah. Hey, what's up, America? Everyone's looking in the lens, and I'm like looking at the at that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Cool. Who's next? Kendra. Why are you smiling? Give me that smile, man. Keep one. Close mouth, one up. Walk in the middle one here. Yeah. somehow convinced MTV to come down and uh, and check out one of our shows and it 
went pretty well that they ended up doing an interview with us. And this is my first ever encounter with MTV ever, other than watching it as a viewer. So now I was being interviewed by MTV. Uh, pretty crazy moment. So we release these videos to our, the people that are on our website. Like, like nice just girls. cameras follow us around, like taking a shit or like, Eating a sandwich, or Kendra and I are fighting. The camera. This is the guy. That, this cable guy, Jeff. He's been following us around for a year now with the camera, capturing every movement that we make. Before I even did a show, we had like the website and the, and the video camera rolling, and people are buying these tapes, and they're feeling like as they should that they're a part of this too. So that's the whole thing. People can live vicariously through whatever we're doing, and people like that. They don't like just to be like fans and put posters on the wall. They like to feel like they're also like succeeding, and this is like a way that they can do that. It's true. Do the MTV first interview ever. Got to start somewhere, right? <laughs> Crazy shit. I think the fact that there's like eight people in the audience made me feel like shit. Made you feel like shit? Yes. They made you feel like shit? No, the fact that you you guys are like, you're, you put your heart on the stage and you're like dancing like freaks and there's like five people going, hmm. Yeah. And they've all got cameras. That's the funny thing about it. I wanted to do your song. You would have loved that live. That's the best song live. No, I know, but yeah. they, they were like, they, 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 they want us out of here for some reason. I don't know. Um, you guys took the door, right? The door was your take? I didn't personally. I know, but, but, but that's but you're the promoter, right? Uh, you got I got one of your guys, uh, not one of your guys. Yeah, the guy I was you just came trying in. to look for the girl who was at the door. Okay. Okay. I was trying to deal Some with Some guy this. came in, paid his ten, him and his buddy paid his ten bucks, five minutes before the lights came on, and he really wants his fucking money back. Let's give me a card. Thank you, brother. That's our first refund, you just saw that. I wish I had that on tape. We got it. Yeah. 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 You must burn through so much tape. Dude. Well, we have no idea. I do have ideas. Documentaries, I do 250, 300 hours of footage, but I don't know how much. It's been really crazy. Over, over a year of footage. Of these yeah, guys. true. He has, he's been there since day one with this camera. Somebody got drunk and pushed another guy, and it crashed through this glass window. And uh, so they told Josh that we owe them $4,000 for the damages. I forget how that one ended. Um, Josh kind of made it go away. <laughs> so God knows what Josh did, but God bless Josh uh, for whatever he did. But th that ended up getting resolved. We had found a bar that we had heard that has a webcam that's just on that people can like log on and just watch like a live bird's eye view webcam of what's happening in this bar. It's called McReds, a bar that I would never go to because I wouldn't even know about it if they didn't have this webcam. So we decided, hey, let's get a gig there and then we can put on our website their feed and then people can watch the Stone Movement live around the world. It's gonna be huge. We'll be the first live streaming concert. <laughs> like, uh, you know, the ambition was there. So we, uh, we booked the show at McReds and we played and I think like 19 people watched it live, um, which was a huge deal for us at the time. It was like, holy shit. 19 people from God knows where were watching us live. 
from McReds. This we are outside. We are here at the um, McReds Lounge at one of our most prosperous gigs that we've ever had as the Snow Movement. Eric, I've got some good news for you. Your mom is here. <laughs> yes. Party. Your mom is in the house. You gonna play? Your mom here? We're playing. <laughs> he knows. He knows. He knows. Oh my it's the best. So All right, let's get unloaded, kids. We got a big show in front of the fan. Breaking news. What's what's that on your? My pass to get in. I'm wearing one too. This it means that I'm under eight. It means I'm under 21. A wonderful place. Which means that Stewart booked us at. Stewart's the best that. producer ever. Cause he books us at McReds and Van Nuys. That is so funny. And Eric's mom's here. <laughs> Live your life as if you ain't got no tomorrow you got. Take it as it comes, you got. Let that bullshit go, yo! Hey! Yeah, 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 yeah! One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Another example of Danny's handiwork was getting us our first radio interview, um, college radio, to be specific, at USC. You know, you have to imagine when you go through life and you haven't experienced anything, every experience is a huge experience, you know? Your first time on the radio, whether it be college radio or TSM radio, it's still your first time and it's so exciting. Who is Stone Movement? Stone Movement is like... A, a way of presenting hip hop like it's never been presented before. You got a bunch of kids that grew up listening to all of you know the hip hop music in like the 80s, the 90s, now, and just wanted to present it in a different way. Like we don't, we we, we do it with like a live band. It's not just like an MC with a DJ like scratching, swearing, grabbing his balls and stuff like that. Am I allowed to say that? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's not on the list. Okay. On the list. Okay. How long have you guys actually been working together? Uh, well, it actually, the whole story is kind of interesting. It started out, I never actually like came out and was like, yeah, I want to be a rapper, I want to be like, do this. Like, I, I'm, acting is really my background. I did this movie called uh, Donnie Darko. Oh couple my years. god, that yeah. movie is genius. <laughs> 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 yeah. You were in that? Yeah, yep. yeah. I was like this, the wacky like sidekick guy that like wore the Hulk Hogan outfit. Oh like, my god, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. What, what, what was that's your right. character's name, Stu? Uh, the character's name was Ronald Fisher, Ronald, Ronald Mania. Fisher, yeah, I had it going right. on. You guys had that yeah. conversation about, about the Smurfs. Fed? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So you know the movie. All right, all so right. basically, at, at the Sundance Film Festival, like during the premiere for the movie, the halfway through the the first screening, like the 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 movie just stopped. Like it started playing upside down and backwards, and they had to stop the movie. So like they had a, a like a question and an answer period halfway through the movie. Yeah. It was that Sundance. Everyone was like, "This is the weirdest movie ever." They didn't know what to ask. So I sort of just like went up there and like started entertaining the crowd. And like this character that I was doing like sort of like a stand-up comedy thing. I started doing a character called Stu the Jew, like a hip-hop guy. I was like, "Yo, Stu the Jew at Sundance with my crew," like that kind of thing. It was pretty stupid, but people were loving it. And uh, I got back to LA like a few days later, and I got a phone call from this guy. Uh, uh, young Lord Richard Young Lord Frierson, he's like a bad boy hitman producer guy. Called me, he was like, "Hey, you should you should record something." And I was like, "Nah." He's like, "Yeah." So I just recorded like a song with him. It turned out it to be like five songs, then like seven songs, and I started having like so much fun. Then we were like gonna book a show. Tim Kane, what, what's your musical influences? I'd say definitely, guitar wise, would be John Frusciante from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Oh, okay. It's just like ever since I was a kid, I've loved that guy and. Uh, Anything hip hop style, the, the, the roots, roots, the roots. The roots. Mine are pretty much the same as like like Tim's, and uh, I, I definitely am more of a rock influence. But I've really gotten into like the roots feel, and like you know, Red Hot Chili Peppers are probably my biggest influence. Like Red Hot Chili Peppers, circa '91. Say what's up, all the TSM fans out there watching. What's up, TSM fans? Listen to KCRRadio.com, Stone Movement, along with Iceberg. What else can I say? <laughs> Now this is getting towards the end of the run here, but uh, our buddy Rob Powell, he, 
he took over this bar called The Mint, which was like this really cool, famous, kind of trendy jazz club that he was going to revamp. And uh, it was his club. Like, you know, he was running the place. And Rob sort of gave us carte blanche to, uh, you know, play whenever we wanted. Uh, one night we ended up, uh, Rob had booked a private <laughs> party for Scandinavian tourists where he had sold out the club to like these tourists, these Scandinavian tourists and the band that was supposed to perform that night, something happened and Rob called and was like, hey, can you guys come down here to the club and play for these Scandinavians? And we were like, sure. And uh, it helped that Rob had provided us his club so many times before, our act was tight at this point. So we went down there, we brought our gear and we put on a show. Those Scandinavians probably went home and thought like they, like we were the biggest thing. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> For all they knew. The date is, uh... Hold on, I got this. It's the 3rd of April. 3rd of April, 2003. Stone Movement live at the Mint. 150 Norwegians. Hey, wait, wait. Crowd. Okay. So beautiful. I'm moving to Norway. That's just our movement. That's just a woman. That's just a woman. <laughs> She's so shy. She's so crazy. I am 16 going on 17. 17. Maybe I'm just naive. naive. I like girls that wear Abercrombie and Fitch. Chinese food makes me sick and I think it's fly when girls This is a great thing. Oh, the summer. Oh, well, the summer. Oh man, you're totally making OMG part 4 with this footage. <laughs> the next video featuring Allison going like this. <laughs> yeah! Ladies and gentlemen, Allison is gonna join us on take for this one. So it's 2003 now, and um, Tommy and I go our separate ways. And um, I, I end up taking like a nine month sabbatical from music. I, I wouldn't say we had creative differences, but there was some shit. And either way, it's all good. But uh, at that point, you know, as good as things were going, it was like we had to hit pause. And the pause lasted like a lot longer than I thought it would. So much so that like, you know, I woke up one day and I'm like, what we were doing, what the, what the hell am I doing? Like, we gotta do this. And uh, I called up the gang again. We pulled it together. And just like that, we were back up and sputtering again. We are the Stone Movement. We are making our return to the stage in Los Angeles, California after a nine month absence. And we thank you very much for coming out. Special thanks to The Raz, Rob Powell, for making this happen. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Greg Wilson and Eric. Happy birthday to you. Yeah, I'd like to say that this is a very special show for. Greg Bahamas. I would say Why? over there, Greg Bahamas. Excuse me, I'm on the phone. I'm on the phone. What is it that Stefan, Greg, and myself have in common with the L Ray that no one else in some moment has? You've played it before? 
Yes, that's right. The only members of the band Hell that yeah, were still a part of the band that played at the Elroy the last time we were here. Stefan, <gasps> Greg, and Bye. myself. Joey, this is your first time playing at the Elroy. Yeah, no, no. Hey, uh, I don't know if you remember, but we played here like before tonight. Yeah, you guys are fucking great out here tonight. Thanks a lot, man. We thought you we thought you rocked so hard Thanks, at the at the mini factory. So I'm gonna stick around because. You're the singer? Uh, huh? Yeah, you guys did a yeah, good job. Yeah, you guys you have a good following too. Yeah, thanks. Cheers, baby. It's 2004. Back at the El Rey. Playing for a packed house with green drink. And Cable Girl's here. <laughs> It's open, come in. Joey! Hey, Joey. Hey, Eagle, how job, you doing, Stu? Great job, man. Dude, thank you! <laughs> I'm going home, dude. I gotta walk my, my shit all the way across the street oh, to have five dollar parking. You got pain to help you. Oh yeah, hey pain. We can have one more drink before we do this. Well, let's go. Let's do this. See ya. Good job, Joe. As always. Good job, Stuart. See you later, Kendra. Bye. Thanks We're for being around, y'all. Later. You, Cable guy. No. Later. And I'll do it again. I tell you. <laughs> At Joey. And one more time. <laughs> oh, he's done. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. This chapter of TSM, we'll call it chapter one, was coming to a close. And it needed to come to a close. <laughs> There was just like, you know, we had like the rock star experience, including the breakup, <laughs> you know, uh, without having to actually make any of the money that's usually associated with that type of uh, success and uh, implosion. Uh, but boy, the memories were incredible. And uh, it was a learning curve for all of us. Uh, that final show at the El Rey was uh, three years after our first show. I mean, these memories are so near and dear to me. You know, I haven't seen a lot of these guys in almost 20 years. Like, I haven't seen Chris Roninella, Greg Bahamas, Tommy. I haven't seen these guys in like 20 years. But still, it feels like it was just yesterday, you know? Like, we'll always have this. My time uh, spent with these guys was incredible. The musicians that I played with were incredible. And uh, this was chapter one, and it wouldn't be the last chapter. Uh, this story has a lot more chapters to it. So yes, this was a very long chapter one, but you know, it sort of sets the foundation uh, for what's to come next, which is uh, pretty remarkable in itself as well. Uh, but the guy that really deserves the credit, uh, more so than any of us, is uh, the guy that basically documented the entire thing. Um, for the last 20 years, this is his chapter one, <laughs> you know what I mean? This guy's been rolling camera for 20 years. So you've just seen a small glimpse of what we call the vault. And you know, the guy that deserves the credit, and I think we should finish this with, is this man right here. Cable guy, Jeff. Hey guys. Uh, Jeff? Like, you've asked me to film you and to document everything that was happening with the Stone Movement. And it's been fun, and I haven't stopped, and I don't wanna stop. It's been an amazing ride. Every time things change, the Stone Movement changes with it. It evolves with it. It grows with it. Uh, podcasting, live streaming shows of any kind, the Stone Movement is there doing it. So are you holding out hope that something big will happen? There's always hope. I've had hope since, for 20 years now, I've had hope. Uh, and it continues, and I will always have hope. It's a great group of people who are involved in the movement, and I want nothing but success for all of them, for Stu, for, for Eric, Stefan, Danny, everybody. I wish nothing but success for all of them because they're all very talented people that deserve, deserve this showcase, that deserve to be seen. 
Oh, you're the best. Oh, thanks. <laughs> what a guy. Cable guy, Jeff. He's great. He's great. Thank you for doing this, man. Thank you for everything. You're the Thank man. Thank you. Thank you. You're the man. I'm going to cry. Are you crying? I was. Um, that's the end of the videotape. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed making it. Here to say goodbye with me is Cableman Jeff. Hello. Goodbye. Jeff, did you have a good time? I had a great time, man. This was a lot of fun. I can't wait for the next one. Googly godly. Hi, Sue Stone here welcoming you to the rehearsal. Uh, the name of the game today is Where's Chris? He is not here. He is not here. Rehearsal stop at 4 o'clock. It's now 25 minutes after 4. No, it's 35 minutes after 4. And there's no Chris. That was good. Hi, my name is Sarah. I'm from Norway. And you should listen to Stone Newman. Look at this guy right here. This is T Mac, Tommy Mac, Tommy Mac. Cable Guy Jeff making his first appearance. What's up, Cable Guy Jeff? That's a nice hat sponsored by the Mindless Reaction. Want to see some tricks? Sure. Hold this. Truth to your camera? Fine. Watch this. That's pretty cool. What about this one? What? That wasn't as cool. Oh, this one. This one right here. That was kind of cool. We got a cross. How about this trick? <laughs> What's up? The show's over. I'm sitting in the back here with uh, my body and myself. Thank everybody for coming. It was a wonderful experience. It was a pleasure to perform it. It was so fucking fun. Thank you for holding that door, Danny Rukasian, aka Ruxin. Say what's up. Rock on, dude. Stone no movement. Stone no movement. Coming soon to a town near you. Thank you. I love everybody. Mwah. Who's that keeping your motherfuckers laughing? In your head, the stones is playing so long. Playing so long. It's playing. Push stop, please. I got my voice heard, please. Just push stop. Sure, wouldn't grow up. You say you're sick of life, 
Well then throw up You gotta be in last At least you showed up Your girl says you're moving fast Well then slow up ha. There you have it That's how I live As far as good advice ha, that's, that's all I give Hidden in metaphors Like life's a race And remember There's no shame in third place Oh, yeah.